Hey guys, William Justice here. Today I'm going to show you how to make these real quick um, Christmas ornament animations um, using DaVinci Resolve and Fusion. Um, it's really easy and just takes a few steps and you can make some really interesting effects. And you can, it actually applies to things that are not holiday or Christmas oriented. Um, if you're making any kind of a circle um, with a sphere, want to put something on it, it's really easy to do. I want to also wish everybody a happy holiday season and a Merry Christmas. Um, just wishing the best for you, your family, friends, and loved ones. Hope everybody's um, happy, safe, and healthy this holiday season, and just have a really wonderful time. If you're enjoying my videos, make sure that you like and subscribe. I have a lot of content on DaVinci Resolve and Fusion, so if you're interested in it, I am too. Um, I like to play around and create um, all kinds of interesting animations and um, see what different kinds of things I can learn. Okay, let's get into this. We're gonna make some 3D animations in Fusion. Um, to make some balls like this, you can put anything you want on them, and it's a really interesting effect. Let's check it out. Okay, let's start by making the red and green Christmas ball. It's pretty easy. We're going to use a 3D shape and add a little bit of a pattern to it to create the effect. So let's add a background image and connect that up to the media out. And on top of this, we're just going to add a 3D shape. So take the this 3D shape node and put it into the node area. We're going to add a merge node, which is this one. That's a 3D merge. This is a 3D merge. And then we're going to add this last one, which is the 3D render. We're going to take the output of the render and put it right into the output of the background and this is going to put our 3D shape on top of the background. So let's uh, hit 2 on media out, and you can see we have a shape there. It's uh, the, G the default shape is a flat plane, so let's just switch that to a sphere. And you can see we kind of have our basic circle shape, and we're going to reduce the radius down to where we can kind of see most of it in the viewer. Okay, so now the next thing we need to do is give this a little dimension, and we're going to do that with light. So go to the 3D renderer and enable lighting. And you see everything disappeared. That's because there's no lights in our scene. Go to the 3D Merge, and we're going to click this um, icon here to add a spotlight. And that puts the spotlight into our scene. So let's take a look at what we have. So the 3D scene is on the left, and then the output is on the right. So you can see that right here, our light is sitting right on top of that uh, our sphere. All we need to do is click the spotlight, grab the blue arrow, and move it back a little bit. And you can see that we have our sphere. And it's got a little, of a, little bit of a dimension there. We can move the light around, and you can see when the light's not sh when the light's not shining on the sphere, we're not able to see it. So this light's hitting the sphere directly on, and we want to kind of have the light coming a little bit from the top right. So what we're going to do is click the spotlight, and go to transform, and the pivot is we're going to say use target, and the pivot is what the light is shining at. So now, you, now as we move the light, you'll see the light it starts the light changes its rotation and angle to point right at that pivot point. When we do this, the light's not shining on the back. We kind of want it to be filled in. We don't want it to be so dark on the other side. So an easy way to fix this is just to add an ambient light into the scene. So we're going to click the 3D Merge, click Control Space, and we're going to type in Ambient. And add an ambient light there. And you can see we have a little bit of, little bit of a fill on this back side. And you can adjust the intensity of this light to fill a little bit more or less. We'll go right in here. It's, uh, we can play with this later if we want to. Next thing we're going to do is add a pattern to the shape. This is going to make it look really interesting. Um, you can do this real simply with any image or video. So I'm going to just take um, this image here, drag it from the media pool, and take it and put it right into the green input for the material on the shape. And you can see that we have a pattern on there. And we'll add a uh, transform. This is just real quick to show you what's going on. And we can move this pattern around. You can see it, it's moving around the sphere, bending and warping to the shape of the sphere. If we go too far, um, you see it kind of cuts off the edge. So. All we need to do on this transform node is we're just going to set the edge to wrap, and that's going to move it around. You can set it to wrap, duplicate, duplicate, or um, or mirror, and you can adjust the size and rotation. Um, you can really do this with any, any image or video. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a pattern that has vertical um, green and red stripes. And we're going to use the fast noise node to do that. So let's delete those out. We're going to add a fast noise in, and we're going to put that in viewer one. Click color, choose gradient. And the gradient type set to linear. And with the linear gradient, you see we get this green line here. This is we can with this line we can specify the direction and length of the gradient. So you can pull it closer together. We have a smaller gradient, and put it right in here. So it's pretty close together, and we'll go about like that. Now to get it to repeat to get the vertical stripes, all we need to do is come down to repeat and say ping pong, and it's going to take this distance and just keep repeating it throughout the uh, the composition. You notice it's kind of faded out there. If you want really sharp, um, clean edges, take this gradient and move the black to the middle and move the white to the middle. And you see all of a sudden we start to get a real clean line there. 
And then you can adjust the size of the gradient to adjust the size of your stripes. They're a little bit um, wiggly there. You can adjust the fast noise and take the detail down to nothing and you can get straight lines or you can have really wiggly lines. It's, it's up to you however you want to do it. And now that we have this, this image or this pattern we've created, we just need to take it and put it into the material pattern of our shape. And you can see we got the shapes on there. And you can see we got the pattern on there. And we can adjust the size. We want it to be a little small. We can do that and have lots of stripes. And we'll go back to the fast noise. Let's adjust the pattern. Let's move it over a little bit, kind of toward the black and white are about even. And there we go. We got a, we got a nice little pattern. Um, to animate it, all you need to do is click to change the offset. And you can just use keyframing to change the offset property. Now you'll notice that it's right in here. These lines are not, not quite straight here. And to fix this, you just need to have more um, subdivisions on your shape. So click Shape 3D and Base Subdivisions and just move this up a lot and that then you'll get a lot smoother lines right in there. To get the color, we're going to go to the Fast Noise. We're going to click on, we're going to click on the first arrow. This is going to let us set the black color and we're going to set this to just a nice green like that and click on the second arrow for the white color. You can add more in by just clicking in here if you wanted to. And we're gonna set this one to red. And there we go, we got a, a green and red striped kind of a ornament. It's got a little uh, little um, little shine on it. Now this, this is flat. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little bit of dimension to this shape. And we're gonna use a material to do this. Right in front of the fast noise, we're gonna add a blend node. So hit control space and type blend. And this lets us create a material. Now, nothing really happened yet, but we're able to do a few more things now. So with this blend node, we can change this highlight here. So let's click the, the blend node and you'll see specular. So click on this and we can change the exponent and intensity. So that's the shine of the light on the object. So you're able to control that with this blend node. We can also add a little bit of depth and richness to it with a bump map. So in the node area, click the node area and right, uh, click the node area hit control space and type in bump. And we're going to take this bump map and our fast noise and put it right into the bump map and right click on this, the output of the bump map and drag it to the blend node. And that's going to give us some options for which input we want to connect it to. And we're going to connect it to bump map material. Now you're not going to see anything really happened here, but we have some controls. So we can take this height scale and move it up and you can see that we start to get some texture there, a little bit, little bit more depth to the image. And you can see the light reflecting off of that. And basically this is using the values, the luminance values of our fast noise that we created to add depth to that image. And we can still take the fast noise. And here's where we can animate it. We're gonna click uh, the offset, um, put a keyframe on it, move over, about a, move over about 100 frames and we can just set it to whatever we want, how fa however fast we want it to spin like that. And now we have a spinning Christmas ornament. Another thing you can do to give your textures a little more pop is to add some grain. So you can see in this, this um, shot right here from the intro, um, I added grain right after the fast noise and that gives it this uh, kind of a rough look. And we'll turn that off and you can see it kind of is smooth. So I believe the grain is only available in Resolve Studio, but it does give it a, a nice look. Okay, now we're gonna add the 3D text spinning around the sphere. Um, just real quick, let's go over some 3D navigation. In the, with the merge selected, you hit, hit one so that the merge is in the first viewer. Hold down the middle mouse button and you can kind of pan around. If you hold down the Alt key and the middle mouse button, you can spin around the center point of the animation. If you hold down the Control key, you can kind of zoom in and out. If you ever get lost, right click on this perspective area in the bottom right, and you can choose front. Right click, you can choose top, and now we're seeing the, the 3D space from above. And we're gonna use this to add our 3D text. So let's zoom in a little bit and we're gonna add the 3D text. So in the, uh, the tool area here, take the text and drag it in. This is the 3D text and we're gonna say Happy Holidays. And we're gonna make it bigger. And we're gonna take the 3D text and bring it into the Merge 3D. And you can see it right there. So if we go back to the perspective view, you can see we have the Happy Holidays right, kind of right in the center there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna shrink it down just a little bit and you see it's behind the sphere. And for the vertical anchor, we're gonna hit this middle option so it's lined up with the very center of the shape. Next, we're gonna to go to extrusion, which is down here on the right, and we're gonna bump up the extrusion, and that's gonna give it a little 3D perspective. So when we zoom in here, you'll see that um, 
it has a little bit of a 3D shape to the text. Now what we want to do is we want to take the text and bring it right to the front of the sphere, and then we're going to bend it around it. So with 3D text selected, hit Control Space and choose Transform, and find the Transform 3D and add that. Then we're going to grab this blue arrow, and we're going to move the text forward to where it's just popping through the sphere. You can see right there. So if we go to top, this is a good way that we can kind of zoom in and see that we want the, uh, the text just kind of coming out of there. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to bend the text around the sphere. Let's make it just a touch smaller, like that. So right after the transform, we're going to add a bender node. Hit Control Space and type in bender. Now the bender node takes the text and moves it around and warps it. You can see you can change, pick the direction, move everything around. Each of the letters is moving individually. So what we need to do is we're going to reset it and hit group objects. And now it's going to bend all the letters together. We're going to choose X and you can see we're bending it up and down, but that's not the way we want it to go. We want it to wrap around the sphere. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the angle to 90 degrees. And then now when we bend it, we're going to see it's going to be bending around the sphere. And if you look on the left hand side, all we need to do is bend it just enough to where it kind of digs into the sphere and it's popping out just a little bit. And let's add a little bit, a little bit more extrusion to it and adjust the bend a bit and go back to the perspective view and spin it around. Okay, you can see that the text is kind of coming right out of the, the sphere. Now what we need to do to animate it is right after the bender node, we're gonna hit uh, control space and we're gonna add another transform 3D and go into the controls and this allows you to move the text around. So you can see we can adjust the Z angle. The Y is gonna spin it around and all you need to do is animate these. You can see we got the X. So we can animate that text to um, move around our sphere. And that's just some, some basic 3D things. Hope, uh, hope you found something in this that you like. Guys, thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Um, saw how easy it is to make some 3D animations in Fusion. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys next year. And as I, like I said, I uh, wish everybody a very Merry Christmas and a ha Happy New Year and Happy Holiday Season for everybody. Thanks for watching.